Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today is a really big day for me. So this, like this month, the end of May, marks my one year anniversary of doing not only the Curly Girl Method, but of stopping using heat of any kind, straightening, you know, blow drying on my hair whatsoever. So a year ago, I decided to start embracing my natural hair. I spent the last 10 years before that blow drying and straightening my hair multiple times a week. And you can see from my earlier videos, I always had straight hair. And it even got to the point where I tried to like bleach parts of my hair and that also didn't go well and also severely damaged my hair. So a year ago, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna try the curly girl method. I'm gonna try actually leaving my hair curly. Um, and I'm just gonna give it a year. I'm gonna give it a year and see how it turns out. I won't let myself quit before a year. I'll give it the full year, and then after that, I will decide whether or not I want to stay with it. So here. Okay, so we talked about my jobs. We talked about possibly moving. What's there left to talk about? My hair. So if you haven't been following my channel for a little while, or if you're new, um, basically I have super like curly natural hair but i spent the majority of the past 11-ish years blow drying and straightening it every time i washed it i know it's like heat damage to the extreme and if you saw some of my videos from last year you'll remember when i tried to dye like the bottom half silver so now that's still like a light brown so that's pretty like heat damaged you know, color damaged, all all the damage, basically. Um, but even after all of that, my curls, they still bounce back and they didn't look that bad, honestly. Like I went to a salon and they saw my curly hair and they had like no idea that I had been blow drying it and straightening it for that long because my curls still, like they held in there. This is like second day hair, so it's a little messy, bear with me. But I figured it was time to stop forcing my hair to do what it doesn't want to do like I need to embrace the curl and embrace the frizz something that actually used to always annoy me about my hair was that no matter how much I straightened it how much I blow dried it how much I try to keep it away from water and frizz it would always curl back up it always curled back it wasn't the most healthy of curls but no matter what my hair always curled it wasn't until I actually started doing a little bit more research on curly hair that I realized how lucky I was because a lot of people, if they spend that much time blow drying and straightening their hair, they actually lose their curls and lose their curl pattern because they've just put it through so much damage and so much trauma. But despite everything that I had done, I'll throw some pictures up as I'm talking about how my hair looked before I actually did the diva cut, but just stopped using heat on it. There were still curls and they were still fairly well defined. They were just fried. <laughs> They are fried to oblivion. I realized that, you know what, I was lucky that I still had hair and that I should give it TLC and that I should give curly hair a chance. So I decided in May that I was going to do at least one year of no heat, no straightening, nothing. I was going to do my best to follow the curly girl method. So here we are. I've gone through a lot over this past year with my hair. I've learned a lot. I still have a lot that I need to figure out and learn more of. But this video is essentially to kind of recap how this past year went with regards to my hair and if I'm deciding to stay with it and keep my hair curly going forward. To kind of structure this video, I first wanted to go through some misconceptions I had when I first went curly and decided to keep my hair curly. And then I really wanted to talk about my biggest struggles with this. And then I wanted to talk about kind of my current routine and what products I'm using and how much I'm spending on those products. And then at the very end, talk about whether I think this has all been worth it and if I'm going to actually stay curly girl or not. So let's jump right in. A few conceptions right off the bat. I thought that going curly girl would mean just keeping my hair natural, not blow drying it, not straightening it, and that it would be a lot easier and less time consuming. That was wrong. <laughs> 
I spend the same amount of time, if not a little bit more time now, upkeeping my curly hair than I did when I was blow drying and straightening it after every wash. A misconception along those lines was I thought it wasn't really going to cost me a lot of money in upkeep because I wouldn't really need a whole lot of product since my hair is already curly. <laughs> no. I definitely spend more on hair care products now because I'm trying to moisturize my hair, repair my hair. Whereas when I was blow drying and straightening it, I was just like damaging the heck out of it and then using products to keep the frizz away. Whereas now I'm actually using products to deep condition. I'm using products to really deep, like deeply clarify my scalp. Uh, like I'm spending more on products now, definitely than I thought I would at the beginning of this process. So if you're someone who's naturally curly, who is thinking of actually embracing your curls and stop straightening and everything, it is going to cost you. I mean, you don't have to spend what I've spent on like Diva Curl products. There are drugstore alternatives, but unfortunately for the majority of the steps in my routine, the products that I have found that have been the best and have worked the best have been from Diva Curl. Though not every step, I have found a, a, a gel that works really well from like Amazon and my deep conditioners, you don't have to go to Diva Curl for deep conditioners. I found great deep conditioners from Target and from the drugstore. So those are my two main misconceptions. I kind of thought it would take me less time to get ready and it would just be less work overall since all oh, my hair is already curly. That's not how it went. So to go over my current routine right now, I had to change up my routine. I did do a whole get ready with me in the morning and hair care routine a few months ago. I'll link that up in the cards if you missed it. But now that we're in the summer and that there's a lot more humidity and a lot more frizziness opportunities out there, I had to completely change my routine because what I was doing before just wasn't cutting this. So I washed my hair yesterday and what I did was wash it with a drugstore clarifying shampoo. And then after I did that, I conditioned with the Diva Curl One Condition Decadence. I did not do a leave-in. I try to do a leave-in deep conditioning treatment once a week. I tend to do that like Sundays. Um, and for the most part for my deep conditioning, I've been going for the big Diva Curl one that I picked up. This is the Melt Into Moisture Matcha Butter Conditioning conditioning, conditioning Mask. This has worked amazing for me. And for a while, it was the only good deep conditioning treatment that I knew of until I figured out some others. So a couple from Shea Moisture. These are really good. The one that I've really been liking recently that is even like a smell dupe for the Diva Girl. They both smell like, uh, like Play-Doh, which is the weirdest thing. But this is the Deep Treatment Mask Raw Shea Butter with Sea Kelp and Argan Oil. And it's for dry, damaged hair. I love to use this one. This is a pretty big container. I got it for $10 at Target. And this lasts me about four or five deep conditioning treatments. When if I do that once a week, you're looking at about a month, month and a half-ish of deep conditioning. And whenever I deep condition, I always do it right after I shower. I slather my hair in the deep conditioning treatment, and then I put it up in a um, shower cap, like one of those disposable plastic ones. And then I put on my hot head heat cap after heating it up in the microwave. And I think that actually, um, like, devoting myself to doing that once a week has made the biggest difference in my hair like bounce back because if you look at videos I will throw in some video clips from when I first went curly girl you can see how damaged my hair is and how frizzy and how there's no defined curl to it and the biggest change I really made was committing myself to doing a deep conditioning or a protein treatment at least once a week for this year and I have done that for the majority of the time I probably missed one week or two here or there but I have done it for the majority of the time and as you can see now my hair does look a lot better all of the damaged parts that I tried to bleach have grown out and I did do a big chop I did do a whole video on my big chop if you missed that I'll throw it up in the cards but I did do a big chop but now you can see my hair has actual like defined curls to it and it just looks so much healthier and it looks incredible. And I really think the majority of that was from just cutting out heat completely and 
devoting my time to deep conditioning treatments, which I still do. I still do those at least once a week. I'm actually trying to, I don't know if this is going to work time-wise, but every time I wash my hair, I'm trying to do a deep conditioning treatment just because I know it works so well. I can't always do that because I try to wash my hair like twice a week. I'm in a deep condition once a week, so it doesn't always work out time-wise, but I, that's my next goal. I really do want to get to a point where I deep condition my hair every time I wash it. A new product I haven't tried out yet that I literally just picked up from Target yesterday is another deep conditioning treatment. This is from Cantu, and this is the Shea Butter Leave-In Conditioning Repair Cream. It's a huge container. I got this for like 12 bucks at Target, and... It smells divine. And this is the next deep conditioning treatment I'm going to test out. I still have a bit of the Diva Curl that I need to use up. There's only a little bit left in the Shea Moisture one. So once I use those up, I'm going to test out this Cantu one. If you guys are interested in a whole video, like going over, like kind of like I did on my face palettes, going over all of my deep conditioning treatments, I can do that 100% because um, it will also help me kind of gather my thoughts on all of these deep conditioning treatments too. The rest of my routine has been pretty simple in that I've really just been kind of coating my hair in gel now that it's really hot out. Um, but before that, I like to use a leave-in. So before I just picked up this other leave-in, I've been using the um, R&B Hair Moisturizer from Lush, which is amazing. I love that as a deep conditioning treatment and I also love it as just a hair like leave-in but it's, it's crazy expensive, guys. It's, 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 an, it's incredibly expensive for what it is, but it's awesome. And so I've picked up two containers so far over the past year, and I've loved it, but I can't, I can't keep up with buying it that often. It's so expensive. Another leave-in that I like, one from Diva Curl, which is also kind of expensive, but not as expensive as that one. This is the Believe in Miracle Curl Plumper for texture and volume. I had a small squeezy tube bottle of this, and my curls looked incredible after using my normal routine after this just using that leave-in just made my curls look so like juicy and plump and i always got compliments in those videos where i did that before where people were like oh your curls look amazing in this video what are you doing like give me another update like it was mainly this leave-in and so i've been trying to find a dupe for this leave-in but it's, it's kind of unique. It looks like a gel. It has a gel-like consistency, but it's a plumping agent, and I haven't found one yet. I'm working on it. I even went to Ulta the other day, and I was like, help me find a dupe for this, and they said there isn't one. <laughs> like, the, the, this is the best that you can find. I'm not going to take that at face value. I'm going to keep trying, but I did buy, like, the bigger kind of pump version of this because it's so good. Moving on to the rest of my routine, essentially I would wash my hair, towel dry it with a microfiber towel, and then use a leave-in like I mentioned before, and then all I would do is mix two gels together and finger curl my hair. And that's all I've been doing. That's exactly what I did yesterday to get this. The two gels that I've been mixing together are these two. This is the Curl Keeper Ultimate Hold with Frizz Control Gel. I bought this on Amazon in a two-pack. If I can find that again, I'll link it down below. This on its own gives me almost too much of like a crunch and the curls are really small and tight. So I didn't like this by itself, but I did like it mixed in with this other gel because this other gel by itself was a little too loose for me. And this is the Diva Curl Archangel Gel Maximum Hold No Crunch Styler. So this one, when I used it by itself, even though it says Maximum Hold on here, I found that my curls were just too loose and I got a lot of frizz with it. But by mixing these two together, I get my perfect little ringlets. And that's what I did yesterday and that's what I've been doing for my current routine. Moving on from my routine to my biggest struggle, which I wasn't really expecting, um, was a product buildup and dry scalp. I noticed immediately that my scalp felt very dry and itchy and that I started seeing like little flakes up here. And for the longest time, I thought that I had dandruff and that I needed to do dry scalp treatments and dandruff treatments and I was going that route and nothing was working because ultimately it wasn't dandruff and it wasn't dry scalp. It was product buildup and I had no idea how to deal with product buildup, which was the biggest problem because I had like these embarrassing big flakes on my scalp, nothing was working, and ultimately it was because I was using a co-wash and I wasn't using a clarifying wash whenever I washed my scalp. 
And so the best clarifying wash that I've found so far has unfortunately also, <laughs> I say unfortunately, has been from Diva Curl, but because it's hella expensive, I need to find a dupe for this product because it actually solves that buildup problem immediately. Like as soon as I use it and like I scrub my scalp and give it a nice little like, I keep a, a wide tooth comb in my shower and I use that to kind of help scrub out all of the flakes. After I use the Diva Curl product and do that, my scalp is amazing. But it's so expensive. I need like, oh my God, it's so expensive. And this is the Diva Curl Build Up Buster Micellar Water Cleansing Serum. And as you can see, I just bought the big version of this. I have been trying to test out other dupes for this product for months now. And eventually I went back and bought like a little mini kind of travel size version of this to test out. And that made me realize how great the product actually worked for me. And so I decided to, you know what, bite the bullet and actually buy the big kind of bulk version of this shampoo because it works amazing and it really solves the majority of the issues that I've had. My issue is that this cost $80. You heard me correctly, $80 for 32 fluid ounces. That's another big struggle. Not only is it with the scalp issues, it's with the price of these products. Like, I don't understand why products that work well for my natural hair cost so much more than a lot of other products, which was also kind of discouraging. Like, if I wasn't in a decent financial position that I'm in now, would I be able to do this? I definitely wouldn't be able to do this with Diva Curl products, and it doesn't help that Diva Curl is held up as like the epitome of great curly girl when really everything is so expensive. You're pricing out a lot of people with these products, and I can't say too many bad things about them because they actually work. And I just think it's very unfortunate that because these products work, they're developed by curly girls, they're developed for us, I don't like that they're so expensive. Like, we shouldn't have to spend an arm and a leg to get products that work for our natural hair. It really upsets me. It really does. So my goal has really been to try and dupe a lot of these Diva Curl products that I've been loving. I know Harman, uh, Harman Discount Cosmetics, I believe that they have a store brand that dupes Diva Curl products. I have not been able to find this yet. We only have like one or two Harmons nearby me, but I want to find those and buy all their products and see if they actually dupe them out. Because if I could find dupes for these Diva Curl products, I would have no complaints. Literally none. So moving on to my last point. Despite all the money and despite struggling this past year and all the haircuts and everything, do I think that this was worth it and am I gonna continue with this? I am. I honestly didn't think I would. I think I would do, I thought like I, I would do this for a year and then give up and go back to straightening my hair. But seeing how much healthier and how much better my hair looks now, I am just encouraged. I can't wait to grow this out and have it longer and do more hairstyles. Because I think the issue is that for the first few months you go curly girl, if you have severely damaged hair, your hair is going to look like crap. Which my hair did. Again, I will throw video clips up. My hair did not look good. My hair on my badge for work on my first day at my job a year ago, it looks horrible. I look like a frizzy triangle. <laughs> but it, it took that long for my hair to A, grow out, and B, get the TLC that it needed through like deep conditioning and through protein treatments and through stopping heat. So I am shocking myself a bit by... <laughs> wanting to stay curly girl. My main concerns still apply. I need to figure out a better way of taking care of my scalp and I need to find dupes for Diva Curl products because I find the prices for Diva Curl products ridiculous. But those are my two main goals for this next year. I'm going to stay curly girl and I want to find cheaper dupes for Diva Curl products. If you guys would love to see videos on that once I can find products. Right now, the only one I could really do are deep conditioning treatments since I already found some dupes for that. If you want to see that, let me know down below. And if you want to see any future videos like that, also 
please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I am so excited with how my hair has turned out and how this past year has really taught me a whole lot. Um, I do have a playlist of all of my kind of curly girl videos. If you want to catch up on those, I'll throw that up on the cards. And I'm just, oh, I'm actually so happy with how this turned out. Thank you guys again for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.